Welcome back, baseball fans. Summer 6972 Carryover League. We are in our final series in the National League before the All Star break. This is the one we've been waiting for, folks. Preseason World, Fury, World Series co favorites the Pirates and the Reds. And uh, we talked in the last video about how desperate the Pirates need to be in this series. Well, let's just look at the standings. And we'll see what's going on here. Well, the Pirates chipped away slightly. It didn't start out good for them. Uh, the series opened in Cincinnati with the Reds taking two straight wins. And the Pirates got on a short flight back to Pittsburgh thinking that they had to win out to keep their season alive. Three River Stadium, they do exactly that. They win three straight and pick up a game in the standings. Now they are a game ahead of the Cardinals, so it looks like the Pirates most likely will finish in second place. Can't quite catch the Reds for first, of course. Not enough time for the All-Star break. You know, there's a story that goes, in 1974, the Pirates hosted the All-Star game and they played the Reds in a series before the All-Star break, just like this. And there was a brawl. These teams don't like each other. There was a beanball brawl. And the booing of the Reds was merciless, as you can imagine. And then on Tuesday night for the All-Star game, still there in Pittsburgh, the top three batters in the National League lineup were the top vote-getters, which were... Pete Rose, Joe Morgan, and Johnny Bench, and they got booed again, uh, representing the National League in Pittsburgh for the All-Star game. Also, I think the Pirates were irate with the Mets manager picking Jerry Grody to be the backup catcher to Johnny Bench instead of Sanguian, the Pirate catcher, something like that. Anyway, we got a game six. Back in Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Home teams won every game. I've uh, also said that you need to win on the road to prove how great you are, but these teams are so great it's almost impossible to lose at home. So that's the Pirate mission. They need to win one of these games to stay in contention for a division run in the postseason tournament or at least a wild card in the playoffs. Uh, if they lose these two to the Reds, it's going to be extremely difficult for the Pirates. They will send Bob Moose to the mound. And unfortunately for the Reds, they have to go to their number five starter, Gary Ross, acquired in the token round of the draft as the swing man. The only reason the Reds need a swing man is because Don Gullett is the only pitcher who can pitch on three days rest. Nolan, Maloney, and Grimsley, though they're very good, can only pitch on four days rest. And it's just, Gary Ross is making his second start of the year. Maybe this might be his first start of the year, actually because the Reds have been so dominant. They haven't really needed a fifth starter. Let's get started. Matty Alou leads things off. 6'10". This guy's in the center field. Tolan of the Bells makes the play. Richie Hebner, 34, flies to right. And Roberto Clemente, 65, skies to right. Now, one of the things I did with the Pirates, knowing that they were so desperate is I actually went back to find the batting orders uh, for the years of 69, 70, and 71, the most common batting order, and that's where Alu had been leading off, but Hebner was put into the two-hole, Clemente, Stargell, I put Stennett in a five-hole because he leads the club in hitting, but Robertson, Oliver, Sangui, and this is a close representation of the Pirate lineup from that era. And that's uh, something that they had not used until this big series with the Reds. Reds, on the other hand, have been running with the same lineup all year, as you can imagine. Bobby Tolan, 2-9. Let's take a look at Bobby Tolan's card. He's having a big year, leading off for the Reds. Everyday leadoff guy. Hits lefties better than righties. Hits 316 with his card. Really incredible year for Bobby. Base hit. He has not been stealing that much in a series because he wants to set the table for Rose Perez and Bench. You can see why. And at home, he's going to relax and stay there at first base. Pete Rose, 67. 
Off the Moose card, single one of 16 is a base hit. Two on for Tony Perez. Two seven is a K. Two on for Johnny Bench. Did you watch the last Red game, folks? If you didn't, you might want to check it out. That's where I gave Johnny Bench the National League MVP award before the All-Star break, because it's ridiculous stats. So, two on one out, Johnny Bench. Two seven is a K, and with two outs, it's Bernie Carbo. 111 is a K, so the Reds get nothing out of that. Stargell, will this be the road win between these two teams? Stargell, 310, flies to right. Stennett, 34, short. Robertson, 16 is a K. This, this series started with a barrage of hitting in Riverfront. Then in Pittsburgh, the pitching started to show up. And it's continued thus far. Lee May. 1-9. Let's take a look at Lee May's card. My goodness. Number six hitter. 1-9's <laughs> a double. He only hit 38 home runs. Mike Fiore. 47's a K. Dave Concepcion. 67. Short X. Gene Alley's a 2-E-24. It's short. And he boots the ball. That's critical. Defense is critical in these games where the home teams won every game. Up and hold for Tommy Helms. 38, grounds a third. You got second and third, two outs for Tolan. 58, flies to right. Reds have stranded four runners. Al Oliver, 67, skies the center. Manny Singhi and 66, flies to left. And Gene Alley, 47, single one to 16, a base hit, finally. The first hit given up by Gary Ross. Matty Alou, 1-2, hit by pitch. Second time around the lineup now. Richie Hebner, two on, two outs. 58, bounce to short. Concepcion's a pretty sloppy fielder uh, during this part of his career, but he makes the play. All right, scoreless. Bottom of three. A rose by any other name. Lines are short. Tony Perez, 2-3, bounces to short. And a struggling Johnny Bench suddenly. 67, short X. He does not have an RBI in this series. After being jinxed by myself, giving him the MVP award. He's struggled since then. So, in the fourth inning, Roberto Clemente, 57, is a K. Stargell, 1-6 is a walk. Randy Stennett, 111, flies right. Bob Robertson, 67, is a K. Gary Ross has done what he's needed to do here in that swing start. Bernie Carbo, 2 fives a walk. Lee May, 2 9, flies a left. Mike Fiore, 34. That's a base hit because you had to hold Carbo on. So you have runners on the corners as he scoots one through the hole between second and first. Concepcion. They're going to bring the infield up and hold in a scoreless game. Concepcion, 2 8, short. Runner from first goes to second. You got second and third with two outs. They move back for Tommy Helms. Helms had some big hits in this series, believe it or not. He had a bases loaded double and a 3 1 victory in game two. Tommy Helms, 45 is a K. We are scoreless, surprisingly, in Cincinnati. Two explosive offenses. Al Oliver, 48 is a walk. This is the breaking inning for Gary Ross. Manny Singhi and 1-3 is a 4-6-3 double play. That is big for Gary. Keeps him around. Gene Alley, 59 seconds C. Break it up for Gary Ross, who actually, who did he pitch for? He pitched for the Padres in 69. He also pitched for the Angels. I think his best year might be 1976 when he pitched 200 innings. But that was well into the future and not a very pleasant one at that. So, five shining innings and a big game six. Before we go to the bottom of fifth, let's pause for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Okay, it's Bobby Tolan of the Bells. 48 pops to second base. Pete Rose, 45, center B. Tony Perez, 2-8 is a K. Wow. 
five scoreless innings. Moose Ross. Here we go. Ross in the sixth. Matty Alou, 2 8. Grounds the first. Richie Hebner, 112. Pops out. Roberto Clemente, 2 6 is a base hit. And Pop Stargell with a runner on and two outs. The pitch to Stargell, 45. Triple 1 to 8. Single gets the triple for Stargell, who's had a horrible year. Just a terrible year. But he's getting hot now, late in the season. And it could be a big second half in the postseason tournament. And if they get to the playoffs, that's what you want. You want momentum. And Stargell's got it. He's at third base with two outs for Stennett. 55 is a walk. That breaks Gary Ross. And now you got to be really concerned here with a big inning. And with a broken pitcher, just needing to get one more out and not wanting a two-run single or whatever. Ross will leave after five and two-thirds. We'll chalk it up to him running out of gas. And it'll be Wayne Granger. Wayne Granger trotting out of the red bullpen with runners on the corners. Pirates are thinking they want to eliminate the Reds. Win the series four games to two. And that will be huge. They would just be a couple games back. And the two teams would play again to start the postseason tournament. And with the confidence of beating the Reds in a best of seven, you can see how the Pirates can see a window to the division title, though a very slim one. So Bob Robertson will bat with runners on the corners. Stennett doesn't have any speed this year. He's an E-Steeler, believe it or not. We'll get it later in his career, I guess. Bob Robertson against Wayne Granger with runners on the corners and two outs in the sixth inning. Let's take a look at Bob Robertson's card before he bats. He and Lee May are kind of dueling it out to see who's the best number six hitter in all of baseball. <laughs> Robert has, Robertson's got 27 homers with the same kind of card that Lee May's got. So, Bob Robertson, the pitch. 1-3, grounds to short. The inning's over. One zip. Boy, this is two tight teams here. And Johnny Bench will lead off the sixth inning for the Reds. 1-9 is double one, single dot dot. Johnny's on. Bernie Carbo. 5-11 is a K. Lee May. 2-4 is a 6-4, three double play. It's the Moose story. Bob Moose, first two guys got on in the first. And then after that, he scattered some singles. one nothing game in the seventh. Hal Oliver leads it off. 3-10, flies to right. Sanguian, 6-12, first. Gene Alley, 66, off the Granger card as a base hit. Matty Alou, Granger's a relief three. Matty Alou, 64, off the Granger card, doesn't have power. Homer, 1-19, that kind of hurts the Pirates there. No two-run homer. That's a two. That's a single. And you have runners on the corners with two outs. This guy, Hebner's got power with two outs. Another key moment for the Pirates in their claim for the comeback. Hebner, the pitch. Two, five, grounds a third. Making it difficult for the Pirates. One run lead, but the Reds have nine more outs in this one. Bob Moose. You got outstanding relief at the end. Hernandez and Justy will pretty much put a kibosh on Rich and I on Navarro in this game. Don't need him. They'll run Moose out as a starter seven until he breaks in a one-run game. But Hernandez and Justy are, th are at the height of their powers there. So, bottom of the lineup. Moose will pitch to these three guys, and then we'll see who pitch the, pitches the toll on. Mike Fiore, 37 to walk. This feels like a World Series game. Concepcion with a runner at first. 111 flies the right. He was a C stealer, which is why he didn't bunt. Tommy Big Game Helms. Two, four pops to third. And with two outs, I mentioned that Tolan is actually better against lefties. So Moose will pitch to him. Bobby Tolan, the pitch. 111 skies to center field. One nothing game in the eighth inning. My goodness, Granger's third and final inning. Roberto Clemente, 2-5, grounds are short. Willie Stargell, 47's a K. He thought he was thought he'd get hot. He has the hit in this game, but and then Rennie Stennett, 2-8, Rennie Stennett, grounds are short. The 353 hitting Rennie Stennett, grounds are short. 
the Pirates are going to put Mazeroski at second base now with six outs to go in Stennett's spot in a one nothing game. You got Rose, Perez, Bench, Carbo. The problem, you wouldn't bring in Ramon Hernandez until you get past Perez and Bench. So hopefully Moose can get a couple of these guys out. Um, my goodness. Yeah, you don't want a lefty pitching a present bench. You could go, if Moose gets into trouble, you could go Justy and then went, and then have Hernandez finish it. So, one nothing game in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Pirates need six outs to win this series. Pete Rose leads off the bottom of the eighth. 56, bouncer to short. This is... A good defensive shortstop. He made an error earlier, but Gene Alley is a 2E24. And he makes the play. All right, here's the big boy pants test. Tony Perez and Johnny Bench. 45 and 40 homers between these two guys. Perez, 68 is a walk. And here it is. You're going to have Moose pitch to Johnny Bench, your MVP, knowing that he could lose the game, a game he has us currently throwing a shutout in. But he's going to do it. Johnny Bench versus Bob Moose. The pitch. 311. That's a walk. And now, at this point, you kind of want to turn things around to Ramon Hernandez here. Moose is one batter away from breaking anyway. So he leaves after seven and a third, throwing a shutout. But let's get a better pitcher than the starting pitcher in. Ramon Hernandez. Take a look at him. He was on the 72 Pirates, 5-0 with a buck 67 ERA. My goodness. And they have 72 Justy behind him, 7-4, 192 if we need him. So a great way to finish for the Pirates. They need to get five outs, though. The Reds have the lead run on first, tie run at second. Ramon Hernandez in the eighth inning. Carbo still on the on-deck circle. He actually has a plenty of walks against lefties. And Ramon Hernandez, that doesn't really matter too much. He's great against lefties and righties. I guess they'll go with uh, Pavlitek here as a pinch hitter. So let's take a look at him. Don Pavlitek, you see he really destroys lefties here nicely, will be the pinch hitter. I mean, <laughs> I guess he's not quite as good as... Bernie Carbo against righties, and that's the lesser of two evils. We'd rather face Pavlitek versus Carbo. So Don Pavlitek, first and second, one out. Pirates playing back, hoping for a double play. The pitch to Don Pavlitek. 48 is a walk, and the Pirates have a mess here. The bases are loaded for Lee May, and oh my goodness, this is really a big boy pants test. <laughs> Lee May with a base is loaded with one out. I'm almost thinking you play this thing back because he has no ground ball Bs on his card, and you can get a double play to end this inning. So Lee May will bat with a base is loaded and one out against a lefty, Ramon Hernandez, the pitch to Lee May. Two, six is a strikeout. And with two outs, it's Fiore. Let's take a look at this guy now, Mike Fiore. Now, he walks enough, and that would be an RBI. Billy Cornigliero is a better hitter, but probably doesn't have as many on bases. So Fiore is going to bat against a lefty, knowing that a walk ties this thing. So Mike Fiore will bat against a lefty. The pitch with the bases loaded and two outs to Mike Fiore. 45, a clean single off Hernandez in the center field. And the weak throwing arm of Matty Alou. And who is it? Johnny Bench. Is it? Will his legs give him the lead? Johnny Bench is a 12 runner. 13 14 with two outs. The plus two makes it 16. You look here under advance. And the roll is a 12. Bench scores. From second on the single by Mike Fiore. Don Pavlitek, I believe, will hold it second. And the Reds, down to the last out in the eighth inning, get a one-run lead. And the home team is winning again. Ramon Hernandez. And batting for Concepcion. 
It's going to be Ray Euler. As he's better than Concepcion against lefties. Let's take a look at him. And the Pirates aren't taking any chances. They're going to go to Justy here. They don't want a fluke hit by this guy. as Justy. Let's take a look at Justy now. They need to slam the door on this Ray Euler guy. They can't get any lucky hits here. So, Justy with runners at first and second against Ray Euler in the bottom of the eighth inning of a 2-1 game. The pitch. Euler strikes out. All right. It's time for the... Pirates to rally. Granger is coming out after two and a third innings as a pitcher of record. And oddly enough, Granger and Clay Carroll are pretty much the same kind of card. They do have a lefty, Strickland. The Reds might go Strickland to start this inning because Robertson's better against righties, as is Oliver. They're going to do it. So Jim Strickland is going to start the ninth inning for the Reds. Take a look at Jim Strickland as Robertson and Oliver are better against righties. So as far as defense goes, one more th switch to throw. Billy Canigliero is going to play left field. And he'll go into where Pavletech was. So Fiore is going to finish the game at DH. So we have three uh, right fielders there, Carbo, and then Pavlitek, and then Canigliero. Bob Robertson leading off the ninth inning for the Pirates, two to one. The Pirates really need to win this one. 6-12 off Strickland, bounces to the pitcher. Al Oliver, now interesting call here. He hits lefties, let's take a look at Al Oliver's card. This is a very young Al Oliver. You know, he's not quite the 300 hitter. He's a 285 hitter with this card. But he has power against lefties and a homer on 3-5. Strickland has homers against lefties. And the the problem with the Pirates is, Ben, this bench is really crappy. Ken Rudolph, Roberto Pena, and Bill Mazeroski. They're kind of weak against lefties. So Oliver will bat in a 2-1 game. The pitch to Al Oliver, 68 off Strickland is a K. Jim Strickland, two big at-bats, and with two outs, no sir, he's not facing Sanguian. Let's take a look at the Manny Sanguian card. I tell you, he's batting eighth with this card. I'm telling you, these are the two best teams in Stratomatic for this Carrier League. It's just that the Pirates are unfortunately in a tough situation as far as getting to the playoffs. Clay Carroll, um, he has been... He's given up hits this year, but he hasn't given up runs. I don't, he was in the Cy Young voting for his this 1972 card, believe it or not. And I might want to double check that. It might be it might have been MVP voting. I'll look at that uh, when we do the box. But here's the 72 Clay Carroll card. You see a lot of singles, not many homers against righties. Clay Carroll trying to get the final out. In the ninth inning, this force a game seven. Manny Sanguian, Clay Carroll with two outs in the ninth inning. Here's the pitch. 2-11 to Sanguian is a pop to short. And that's a punch in the stomach to the Pirates. Wow, tough loss. The Reds with three walks and a single in the eighth inning are able to come back and get this win. And your MVP, Johnny Bench, scored the winning run in the game. So sometimes, again, you don't need to be the great defensive catcher. You don't need to hit the home runs. You just need to be a good base runner. And Johnny is in this particular case. Wow. Great game. The Reds will force a game seven. The Pirates are back to 500. That is not good. We'll, we'll check the little standings now. That's not what the Pirates were hoping for. Cannot get a win in Riverfront, and now they desperately need a win in Riverfront in Game 7. Otherwise, the Cardinals will move into second place. So, let's see. Justy struck out his batter. Uh, let's see. And, unfortunately, Bob Moose takes the loss. The two guys he walked, Perez and Bench, scored the only two runs of the game. That's a tough one. Um... A hit a walk and a K. 
off Ramon Hernandez. Bob moves and give up five hits and two runs. Walk four, strike out seven. Clay Carroll got the final out in the ninth to get a save. Strickland struck out a guy in two-thirds of an inning. Really, it was Wayne Granger coming in here, getting that uh, final out in the sixth inning, and then keeping the Pirates quiet in the next two, and getting the win. Two hits and a K. And the Pirates may regret not beating up Gary Ross, who got the no decision. Granger gets the win. Uh, Gary Ross had given up just three hits and a run, and uh, Pirates, you're supposed to do more with that. 1019-0108-2615-4559-5945. I play these games a little slower than the rest of the games because they're so very important. And I want to be careful I'm doing the best for the best teams that I can. So, the teams have split six games. The home teams won every game. The Reds are more than happy with that. They realize that they'll be in first place at the, at the break, comfortably as a matter of fact. That was a big swing in the eighth inning. So the Pirates are back to 500 after all the work they did in, in Three River Stadium. They're back to 15 and 15. They're hitting 276 with a 385 ERA. The Reds get the win, but their batting average is trickling down a bit. They're down to 284 to the 359 ERA. Still great numbers. By the way, Clay Carroll has 13 shutout innings and seven saves, so I got to look up the uh, the MVP thing on him um, or Cy Young voting he had. I'll do that. Well, I could do that right now, I guess. Let's look at the um, standings before we play a game seven, and I'll report back the results of the game seven. We're right back where we started. The gap is the same. Uh, the Pirates, they, depending on what they did head-to-head -head with the Cardinals, if the Reds win Game 7 and the Pirates and Cardinals are tied at a game under 500, whoever won their head-to-head -head matchup gets second place going into the postseason tournament. What's more disturbing for the Pirates, we talked about the other 12-12 and -12 team, which was the Giants. Giants took care of business. They beat the Astros four straight, and the Astros tumbled from first place to third place. But the Astros are still three over 500. That's three good teams here. Even in the crappy National League Mountain Division, you still have a couple teams over 500. So you have six teams over 500. The Reds make seven. The Mets make eight. And even the Phillies are game under. So the Pirates are really scratching their head trying to pull their calculator out and figure out what math they need to somehow still make it into the playoffs this year. It's 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 a real shame that these two teams are in the same division, but iron sharpens iron. This kind of reminds me, this Reds and Pirates, the football equivalent, it reminds me of the, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens being in the same division. Uh, they just beat each other up and it's nasty and they, you know, they're rough and tumble games. And the Reds and Pirates, beating each other up six games in this series and hopefully one of these comes out and makes a World Series run. That's it today. I'll follow this up with the Game 7 result. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you next time. Well folks, I hope Pirate fans aren't listening but the Reds won Game 7 also. Um, seven. It was 10-3 was the final but it really was 7-3 and then a three-run add-on homer in the eighth. Clay Carroll actually got a save in the game. Clay Carroll was fifth in Cy Young voting, 13th in MVP voting in 72, behind three other Cincinnati players. Bench won the Cy, uh, MVP, Morgan and Rose. And in the Cy Young, Carlton got it, but uh, it was Jenkins and Steve Blass, Mike Marshall, and then Clay Carroll. Um, also in those seven games, Johnny Bench did not drive in a run. Zero RBI in seven games for Johnny Bench. He stuck at 46 RBIs uh, in 29 games now instead of 22 games. It's going to be tough sledding for the Pirates the rest of the way. Also, I forgot to do the musical 
acknowledgement. I can do it here because you're hearing it. We were listening and are listening to the Isley Brothers giving it back LP in 1971, mostly cover tunes. And here, this is Lay Lady Lay in the background. Give it a nice little coda for y'all. Thanks for checking it all out.